Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we're on a new project here. Um, this is an outbuilding. We're building for a new client. Although we haven't done any of the walls, we're actually just doing the uh, the roof structure on the top. Um, yeah, so it's just a flat roof, cold deck. So it'll be uh, cross battened to be ventilated on the top there. We've got some an oak, a bit of oak work to do as well, which is nice. Like uh, we've got some wall plates going around the. Uh, brick perimeter there a doorway perimeter oak feature sort of beams and stuff and then we've got four posts and a small lean-to oak structure at the front as a bit of a feature so I'll just show you in inside the structure so yeah as I say the framing hasn't been done by us we've just been contracted in to do the, uh, the flat roof here so a nice easy one really gonna bolt a timber in the web of the steel there um, hang the joists off and then sit them on the external walls. Um, yeah, so as I say, it's a cold deck, so we'll cross batten it, furrings, top layer apply, and I'm not sure what the top membrane's going to be. Um, but yeah, what I was saying with the oak work, it's going to be, uh, I think it's a 4 before 4 oak <coughs> plate going all the way around the brickwork. And then, yeah, we've got a, piece going up there going across the header back down again um, yeah with this oak structure we're not actually working to any plan so we're just sort of essentially making it up as we go along we will obviously plan ahead and get all the measurements right but um, yeah post here and here spanning across the doorway a couple of posts over there and as I say lean to roof for that so uh, yeah let's get into it Right, so the first stage is <coughs> checking everything is level to a rotary laser. As we haven't built the outside wall structure, we don't know at the minute where it's all level. Um, it's all been put on this block work, which looks pretty good. I've looked and eyed down the plates, a couple of dips, but very minimal. So it looks it looks pretty good, as I say. So I've checked the steel. The steels have been five mil over 7.9 meters, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, I've set my got the laser on the steel so it can't move and I've set my staff up to this datum here so oh wait. so yeah that's a steady beep so I know that is set to the laser on top of that plate all I do is keep going round to the corners and check check the level ideally it wants to be a steady beep on top of the plate it will tell me if it's high or low by, so at the minute that's showing high. So I have to get the bubble correct on there. So to see how high it is, I'll just bring the level in front of the plate. So that's only about five mil. It's not that bad. We can get that right without too much trouble. So what we have to, because we're gonna, the, the joist is gonna be hung off a timber bolt in the steel, web of the steel. So they wanna sit slightly lower than the steel anyway, because this steel, like this end, the flange, the bottom of the flange is flush with the plate. That end is slightly in the plate. So we'll have to notch the ends of the joist where they sit on the plate just to get it, get it all level and true. Just check this corner over here now. So that's saying this is, oh, that's good. So this is actually level to that point where I started from over there. Um, so all I do now is just go around checking the rest of it seeing where our high points and low points are and then we're going to get the timber bolted in the web of the steel uh yeah get it all bolted in and we'll probably set a joist one at each end of the building either side of the steel um and then probably pull a string line measure the string line where the joist will sit on the wall and that'll tell us how much we've got to notch it to get it nice and level and true so <laughs>
only filmed the one side because, yeah, it's just much of the same thing, both sides. We haven't filled all the holes yet because they're limited on the nails that we've got. So I've just put three per side just to get them all on. So the way we've done it is we lasered in to this end, two at that end, pulled a string line underneath on the hangers and then moved all the hangers down to the string line with a bit of tension, obviously, uh, to get them all bang in line. So that's how we've done that. And then at the back here, we've got one joist in at each end. So, yeah, lasered in and they actually landed directly on the plates, which is good. Uh, so all of these up to that joint there where the wall's been joined can sit straight on the wall. And one, two, three, four, five of them have just got to be notched about three mil where that wall sits very slightly higher. That means they're all plane in completely level and flat. Uh, and to tie in the roof to the walls, you can see I've done a couple of notches there under this joist. Gonna bore a hole through the ply uh, and put the strap, an L, an L strap on the outside of the ply recessed in 1200 long, so it'll come under at least uh, three or four joists. So, as I say, lateral strap that'll go underneath, fix the joist, blocks in, tie it to the wall. That's both sides. See, I'll do a time lapse of us now fitting all these joists, then the front ones, and I'll come back to you when we've got them all in. That's all the joisting in. We've got pretty much all the noggers in. The perimeter ones here, as you can see, central row here, perimeter ones over there, and then got one more central row, as you can see, they're not fitted yet. All hangers are nailed up, everything's bang on. We've tied the walls into the ceiling as well. Uh, also gonna get two uh, lateral restraint straps underneath and on hooking onto the outside of the wall so that will just lock it all in each end so yeah next stage is to counter batten for airflow because it's a cold deck roof you want to have a decent amount of airflow to prevent any condensation build up so yeah counter battens are 400 centers i am in this case also going to put four by one uh yeah like well wind i say wind bracing it's not really wind break it's just to lock everything in um because it's a timber frame structure you know to, to prevent any sort of movement with this big beam in over time yeah my plan is to get like a almost like a y brace and you're doing a truss roof so coming at an angle from that corner meeting here back down that way the same the other side nailing to the tops of these that's the same thickness of the batten so then the batten can go the opposite way to the joist and then yeah rip some ferns down fix them to every single joist and then over at the front there that's going to be like a a canopy overhang so we've got um yeah oak posts going down it'd be a nice little detail in that section so yeah i'll get a time lapse of fitting all the buttons <laughs>
counter battened as you can see for airflow. I've put this uh, inset lateral bracing in there to lock the structure in. Um, some people might find it unnecessary, but to me it made sense because as I say, that now can't go anywhere. Similar in a truss roof where you do your angled wind bracing and it allows for the cross pads to run straight over. Um, if there was ply obviously going down there, that would hold it structurally, but there isn't. The ply is going on top of the furring. So you've got the height of the furring and the batten off the structure, meaning you know it's not tying it in structurally, it's just giving it a top layer of boarding. So yeah, just got to notch these over this steel that's slightly higher than the battens. Uh, they're quite long furring, so we've got an add-on to put on over there as well. So we'll screw and nail these down in line with the joists on top of the battens. And yeah, then we'll get it applied. And then it's all sorted. We've got a timber to fix out there. Cut the front of the canopy underneath as well. And what we're going to do over that section is slightly oversell the ply because uh, we've got another timber frame building going on there for the second stage for this one. So uh, yeah, we'll get it all, get the ferns on and get it all plied. As you can see, we've got all the furrings down now. So we've 90 mil nailed them, 100 mil screwed, and 50 mil screws at the thinner ends. Uh, all the cross patterns are in, so that'll be nice and ventilated. It's a cold roof. So now we're gonna start laying all the ply board, 18 mil. Start from that end where the canopy is, and work this way. Uh, we're gonna temporarily fix that end because we've got an oak structure below. We might have to fix through the top of the canopy bit that we've formed. So yeah, as I say, temporarily screw that, nail the rest. Um, so yeah, let's get into the ply. So we've got it all plied now. I didn't actually get a time lapse of this because I didn't have enough battery on my camera. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is anyway with ply. So yeah, this is all decked out now. Uh, this is as far as we're gonna go on this one. As I mentioned before, the building is extending over that way. So we've staggered the boards and overhung them as you can see. So we can join it onto the next roof, which will strengthen it up. So yeah, I'll just show the canopy down below that we formed as well. And that's this one wrapped up. So this is a view from down below. As you can see, we've got this nice canopy overhang formed. All I've done is <coughs> half a Simba 2 uh, from this end, cut it at an angle down to nothing at this end. So just, yeah, a bit of a feature. It's not as bulky at this far end here. So we've got the oak posts and structure to go underneath this, which will look quite nice. Oak cladding to go around. So we'll get into that shortly. Just show you inside from underneath. There it is, all the structure, hangers on, battened, braced, furrings. So we've just got some wall plate straps and noggins to fix, to tie the walls into the roof. And uh, yeah, that's this one done then. So thanks for watching everyone. See you in the next one.